Hello. Today we're going to talk about peak detectors. And I'm going to start with passive peak detectors and then I'm going to uh, go into active peak detectors. So let's look into what a peak detector is. So at the bottom of this, I'm showing like a sine wave. So I start with an amplitude that is pretty low, then I increase like the volume and then I go back down. So what the peak detector does is that it follows the, uh, the positive slope of the sine wave. And when the sine wave goes towards the negative side, then the capacitor discharges, discharges into the basically the load, re the load resistance. And you get that droop. It's called a droop. Here you see that droop. And then whenever the sine wave goes into its positive uh, cycle, then uh, it picks up the uh, rising voltage. So it you get like a... So you go up the sine wave, then it droops, then you go up the sine wave, it droops. So here, here, here you have like a change of uh, amplitude. So it goes higher then again it droops, picks up the rising sine wave, and then droops, etc, etc. So if it was like perfect behavior, the peak detector would be, uh, would not droop. So here it would go like up, stays like this, then ride that rising sine wave, stay here, and in this case it would just stay here, all the way. But the capacitor always discharges, so it droops. So this is the passive peak detector. So you have a source like a sine wave or a audio, an audio wave or not audio wave, like an audio signal. The diode, capacitor, and the load. So what's the problem with this design? Well, there's a pro there's a first problem here, because here you have a 0 0.6 or 0 0.7. 0.6 volt drop so it means that this signal here has to be at least uh, 0.6 volt I mean typically it would be much more than that like 10 volts 100 volts whatever because of this guy you have a drop so that's a problem that's the first problem and there is another problem but this is this is not due to that uh, diode being there it's the capacitor has to discharge you see, when it's drooping, it's actually discharging into here, into the load. So if the load is very high, it means that the capacitor is going to hold the charge. So basically, it's going to stay horizontal. But as the load resistance decreases, then you're going to have more of a droop. So basically, so it means that the behavior of this circuit is highly dependent on the uh, impedance or resistance of the load so that's not that's not very good also and i should have mentioned that earlier there's another problem with the diode is that as you know the diode is like a, a active switch so it's either on or off so what happens is that whenever it turns on all of a sudden suddenly you are uh, loading the supply so that's not good either you really would like to have some kind of buffer. Okay, so that's another reason why this circuit is not that great. So this is why uh, it's often a good idea to switch to a active peak detector. And that's what we're gonna look at next. Okay, so now let's look at a active, active peak detector. And it's involving a op amp right here. Op amp. So you have the plus minus terminals. Plus is the non non inverting. Minus is the inverting terminal. This is the output. Uh, there should there should be like a positive supply and a negative supply, but you never put that on a diagram. So it could be like a 741, for instance. So that's your op 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 here. 
and you have you have a diode here on the output so that's the output but there's also another diode here i'll try to explain why this is here so you have a input resistance here 10k you have the this so this is the feedback loop important important to have the feedback loop very important so rf f for feedback 10k as well 10k 10k and the, the same here as before you have the, your capacitor here and you have your load so this is the input and that's supposed to be the output so it's gonna it's gonna go up the sine wave and then it's gonna peak and stay there because the capacitor assuming that the load is uh, the load resistance is very large the capacitor will hold the charge on the positive cycle on the positive on the positive side of the cycle and it's gonna stay there so okay so now you have to analyze this why it does that okay so what happens when v in is positive okay, let me get rid of this that annoys me so when v in is positive so uh so the output the output of the op amp must be such that we end up it's not actually v in it's a little bit less but the output of the op amp should should be such that you get uh pretty much v in here as well or a little bit a little bit less than v in which means that uh, you probably get an output here at uh, v in plus 0.6 volt here because of the drop here i mean the d2 is not doesn't have any impact here so it's basically going like this the output the feedback loop is like this okay and then here you have a bad v in you have a bad v in here so that that's if v in is positive and also what happens is of course this gets you have v in here so the capacitor gets charged it gets the v in on his positive plate and as this thing goes down uh, the capacitor is going to start discharging into the load so if the load is very high it's going to keep its charge so that's why you, you get the detect the detection here it stays at this level if the load resistance is not infinite it's going to droop of course so it's going to droop and as before it's going to pick up it's going to pick up the next rise and it's going to ride it same as before so that's when v in is positive but what happens when v in is negative so when v in is negative what happens so here you would have like a minus minus v in and again uh, the the op amp must output a voltage so that we get minus v in as well so so if you have minus v in here some value like here here you must also have minus v in okay again we are talking v in negative here okay so what happens basically it's going this way that's the, your feedback loop so here you would have uh, minus v in minus 0 0.6 volts okay so here you get the minus v in okay so here it goes this way because it's blocked that way so this is the loop here and that's why you have that diode there so it goes like this that's your feedback loop feedback loop okay so you get minus v in there and here on this side as i said before is this is just discharging because it cannot go this way so it's discharging here so you get to the top you discharge and this one goes down here okay so that's the basic idea i think it would be a good idea to simulate this thing into LT spice and see how it looks like.
Okay, so here is the circuit in LT Spice. Okay, so what I did here is I took two sine sine waves, uh, 50 millivolts amplitude, one at 440, one at 460, so that they are going to beat. And it's not going to be like a regular sine wave, just to make it more interesting and see and see how the capacitor discharge. Okay, so let's run this thing. So let's look. Okay, so first let's look at the input. Okay, but now let's look. Okay, let's get rid of this. Oh, uh, maybe right. Let's look at the this terminal the non-inverting so you get this and let's look at what happens on the other terminal it should be exactly the same thing and it is the same thing okay, so because of the feedback loop it's guaranteed to be the same thing in theory okay so now let's look at the output so right now i'm using a load that's very high 100k so let's look at the output and you can see uh, okay, so it, it um, okay, let's look here. So it, it's going to follow the the rising sine wave at the top. It's going to droop, and it's going to pick up again the rising sine wave, etc., etc., etc. You can play, of course, with the uh, capacitor value. If you want less of a droop, you can increase it. But I think it's fine here. Yeah? But what happens if uh, what happens if I change the load? Let's change the load to something very drastic. Let's put just one ohm. Let's run this sucker. So this is the input. And what do we get as the output? So now we don't get... Uh, it's basically as if there was no capacitor. Uh, what we are getting now is a... Uh, it's an active half wave rectifier, which can be useful, but it is not what we want now. We want a peak detector. So, okay, you can see that it's following the positive cycle and then zero. Next positive cycle, zero. It's exactly a half wave recti rectifier. Okay, so that's a bit of a problem. So we're going to look into a better solution using a second op amp as a buffer on the on the output side okay so let's let's look at the better the better active peak detector so instead of going directly to the load here what we're going to do is that we're going to add another why not another op amp so plus terminal minus terminal And this one is going to have a very simple feedback loop. It's just going to go back to here. And this is going to be the output here. And the, so the load is going to be right there. So that's the load. And the load in now can be anything. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have any impact on the discharge of the capacitor. So this is called, uh, when in this configuration, it's called a volt voltage follow voltage follower. Or I think it's called uni a unity amplifier or a buffer. Very useful. So let's look at it uh, by itself, if you want look at it by itself so you have the minus plus so let's say we have plus minus voltage source you have the feedback loop and you have the output and you have your load here so this is just by itself what it does so you have a feedback loop so let's say you have v in here so because you have a feedback loop you know you know that here you're gonna V in as well. 
okay so it's always the case because this is how a knob amp works when there is a feedback loop the output always has to be such that you're gonna get the same thing here as here that's why op amp are easier to understand than transistors so what does that mean it means that here v out i mean it's v in and hence the name voltage follower so what what does it do it just follows the input voltage that's all it does so it's a unity amplifier it's called unity amplifier as well unity amplifier so and uh, i'm sure you already know this but op amp is that the uh, input resistance the input resistance or impedance is extremely high so when the capi capacitor is charged on this uh, plus plate with the, the positive v in this thing there's no way to discharge you cannot discharge here and you cannot discharge here so it stays at its at this at this level it doesn't it doesn't discharge because there's a in, infinite input resistance here okay so if you want it to discharge you would have to add another resistor here you know maybe some i don't know whatever okay so you would need to have something to discharge but if you don't it's not going to discharge i mean it will because it's not ideal so that's the idea and uh, what else can i say about this not much more than this and we're going to look at this also in lt spice okay we're back in lt spice so we have the same setup in terms of the sources 50 50 millivolts 50 millivolts uh okay 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 so we have this buffer op amp right there yeah here i put a a discharge resistor but obviously you don't you don't really want it so let's get rid of it i must have been playing with it at some point and here i'm putting a load that is pretty high resistance so let's run this sucker so again this is the input so input here is going to be pretty much the same here it's going to be the same so let's look at the output so we get a, something similar than before the behavior has not really changed the only thing that changed is that now we have uh, that buffer and what we can do is so right now the load is very the the resistance of the load is very high but let's see what happens if you put it very low very small like one so let's run it so again input uh, what's the output now same so it makes no difference so that's the beauty of that uh of that buffer here so you have uh so you have so many good things going going with this thing it has a very high input input impedance or resistance and it also has a very very low output resistance impedance so that's really interesting all right i think i'm gonna stop here so if you like this kind of video please like comment subscribe and i will make be making more see you